Hey, 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 Uncle Mark in the mothership, three string, cigar box guitar, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is Jimmy Page's birthday, and I can't think of a better way than to learn to play my favorite Led Zeppelin song. This is The Rover, and I think you're going to find this actually easier than a lot of other Led Zeppelin tunes that we have tried and learned to play on the three string cigar box guitar. As always, thank you so much for all your support. PayPal and Square links down below, plus a ton of other information. So just take a look down there. Cool stuff in there. So uh, this is the Rover. I'm gonna play a little bit of it and then we'll break down exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> fun just way much fun so uh what do we got going on g d g 42 34 24 those are the gauges and i use electric guitar strings i'm playing through a roland mini cube and i will show you those settings at the end of this video i'm using a uh phaser i believe jimmy page uses a flanger but both of these types of effects um, are, are the same in many ways. So if you have a flanger or a phaser pedal, or you have a multi-effect amplifier like this Roland Cube, it can add a little bit of effect to that. So you can take a listen to the album and you'll kind of hear that stuff. So a couple of things we have to go through. We're in open G. What I'm going to do now is turn off this effect so that we don't have it interfering with us. So, open G, G sharp A, there's an A in this, B flat B, there's a B in this, C sharp, okay, we got a lot of things going on here, D, D sharp, E, E is the key of this, so that's the key. F, F sharp. F sharp is going to really come into play when you start doing the, uh, right? So that's where F sharp is, and it's right below those two dots. And then you have G again, and then G sharp and A and B flat. So that's really all you need to know. That's as far as this thing's going to go. And most of the work, most of the action is going to occur around a shape like E, but it's an inversion. And an inversion is just a different way to play an E chord. So this E happens to be E, B, E, 9, 9, 9. We're going to play an E kind of the opposite way. We're going to play B, E, B, 4, 2, 4. So the sound is a little bit different. So you have E here on this ninth fret, and you have E down here, 4, 2, 4. So this lower E sounds a bit more bassy to me, and this one sounds a little more trebly to me. 
which would be absolutely about right because the higher you come up the neck, the more trebly it sounds, the higher in pitch. The further you go down the neck, the lower in pitch or the bassier it gets. Bass, treble. So that's how I think of this. So you're going to be using this E predominantly. The notes that we're going to work with are based in this shape. So this E shape has this note in it, this note in it, and this note in it. We're not going to worry too much about the notes on the low G string right now. We're just going to worry about this right here, this note, and this pinky note, okay? So this is how you're going to navigate. You're going to be here. So you're going to go... So, E to G open, back to E. So play with that a couple of times. And I want you to play with it and then go to the chord. Because throughout this, you're going to bang into that chord a lot. So you've got, and you're going to go with your third finger to that B. It's the fourth fret here on that treble G string. And I use my second finger on that F sharp. So it looks like this. Again, E, G, E, B, F sharp, E. Okay? So you've done a couple of these. So now go through that phrase and add that E. of get you in the ballpark and we're starting to roll forward with this lick. So you're going to do a couple of bop bops on that D. the phrase you got two more notes to hit so e, G, e, e, B, F sharp, e, D, D, e, G, e. and I'm just pulling up into this next section because it's really only two sections we have to do. We do the lick. F sharp. Remember we talked about this. It looks like 11, 11, 11. It's a bar chord on the 11th fret. Then we're going to move down to E. So we're moving down a whole tone or two frets. Nine, nine, nine. Then we're going to move down to D. Seventh, 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 seventh fret bar chord. So it's. Next section. We're going to come up to A on the 14th. So it's 14, 14, 14. So. 
sharp, 11th fret, 9th, 7, 11, 14, 9, 11, 9, 7, 6, 4, 2, E. So again, 11, 11, 11, or 11th fret, 9, 9, 9, 7, 7, 7. Then, 11, 11, 11, 14, 14, 14, 9, 9, 9. And then, 11, 11, 11, 9, 9, 9, 7, 7, 7, 6, 6, 6, 4, 4, 4, 3, 3, 3. You get all that, you got the song fine, you can play along with the album. That little... Pretty easy to figure out, you're just on that low G. A. So, completed. So I love doing this love doing that and I'm usually on the pickup across the pickup so I slam across the pickup so that's how I do that and I use that E then I run into the lick This is absolutely my favorite Led Zeppelin tune. And uh, is it perfect? No. But you know what? It's such fun to play this tune, especially along with the, the album. Physical Graffiti is mind-blowing in its wonderfulness, I guess that, if that's a word. Um, I just really love the album. That's my favorite Led Zeppelin song. And every time I hear it, I'm just blown away. So take a listen to that. Have fun. Don't forget that um, we've got a whole bunch of information down in there from gear recommendations to what I use. And speaking of what I'm using, so uh, when I started this out, I used a little bit of phaser, and I'll set that right now so you can hear it. And that's what it looks like. I'm on the Brit combo, as usual. My gain is not quite 12 o'clock. It's more 2 o'clock, you know, ish. Tone is 3 quarters. But I definitely, on the effects, I'm on that phaser. And I have a little bit of reverb, so you can see what that looks like. And uh, so I love these rolling cubes for that. And that effect has that sound to it. So that's really fun to start start learning how effects work by using these mod these um, these modeling amps really really helps. I uh, have my students buy modeling amps first, so they don't make mistakes buying pedals they don't need or want. Trust me, I've done enough of that. I've lost enough money buying pedals that um, I'm I'm trying to be better, but I still uh, wow look a blue one. Um, Thank you so much for everything you do, and really, I wouldn't be here without you. So, seriously, thank you so much. PayPal and Square links are below. Thanks a bunch.